Hello, how are you doing? Uh, thanks for joining me. So today I'm extolling the wonders of the humble earthworm. Hmm? Are you excited, yeah? Um, so this ode to earthworms was prompted by a conversation that I had last spring with somebody who was asking for my opinion on why their flowering plants were failing and they told me that they were killing all the wood lice and earthworms that they came across in the belief that they were uh, eating or damaging their plants in some way. Now it is true that wood lice can nibble the perimeter of leaves and maybe even damage stems and such but they're easily managed and I'm of the belief that if plants are quite healthy to begin with they can um, they're less prone to attack by any pest at all. Plant health and wood lice aside, please don't kill earthworms. <laughs> Poor defenseless little wriggly tubes, or tubes within tubes rather, uh, which is basically how they're structured, a digestive tube uh, surrounded by a segmented muscular tube, along which has a small little bristle-like hairs called seti, which help the worms grip the soil as they move along. Earthworms have a lot of heart, uh, or uh, specifically five pairs of aortic valves that act as little pumps that uh, pump blood to the back and to the front of the earthworm. A rudimentary doodle there on my part. Speaking of the front of the earthworm, uh, it's where you'll find this belt-like bump called a clitellum or a saddle which uh, has numerous functions, one of which is reproductive functions. And speaking of reproduction, earthworms are hermaphrodites, meaning they have both male and female reproductive organs, uh, which raised the question, for an idiot like me at least, can earthworms reproduce on their own? Um, and the answer to which is no. Uh, I can imagine us being completely overrun by them if that was the case or over wriggled perhaps, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, nonetheless, that doesn't hold them back, uh, given the right conditions, cool, moist soil with plenty of food in the form of organic matter. Populations can reach uh, as much as 400 per square meter. Um, and the more earthworms uh, in the soil, the healthier the soil and therefore the healthier the plants. Why are earthworms so beneficial for the soil and plant growth in their native areas? Well, there's three types of earthworms. There's brandling worms or red wrigglers uh, who um, do a great job composting leaf litter or dec decaying plant matter on the surface. So much so in fact that there's a whole industry and successful method of composting using red wrigglers, <laughs> sorry it's a bit of a tongue twister at times, um, it's called vermiculture. And the other two types are subsoil and deep soil earthworms, burrowing mostly horizontally and vertically respectively. And this tunneling aerates the soil, allowing oxygen and water to travel further down into the soil. And um, as the worms travel themselves, they consume the soil, and they deposit a rich humus like compost basically called castings which is um, allows nutrients to be taken up by plants roots uh, specifically nitrogen furthermore they help transport nitrogen rich soil to areas of more mineral rich soil thereby mixing the soil and making the soil structure more improved and beneficial for plants through consuming soil, the interaction between water, air and the decaying organic matter in the earthworm's gut facilitates microbial activity which helps bind soil particles together into more stable aggregates and this has been shown to help sequester carbon in the soil um, as long as there's sufficient amount of decaying matter present. There's still a lot to learn about earthworms and more research is definitely required and it's surprising considering there could be hundreds just beneath you. But what is clear is the positive effects that earthworms have, uh, which is nutrient cycling, soil aeration, soil mixing, water retention, carbon sequestering, so pretty cool. <laughs> so salute to our 
blind, boneless, tunneling friends. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Salam.